All right, guys, today we are going to be talking about a handful of knives that I think would make really good guide knives. Now, when I talk about guide knives, of course, that is guided hunting, guided wilderness expeditions in general. So these knives are kind of multi-role, multi-purpose knives, and outside of the tiniest of them would all make really good uh, multi-role knives that can be pushed into hunting and processing of game animals slash survival. So that is kind of the uh, driving force to choosing these knives and why, or the kind of reason why I picked many of these. All right, guys, now without any further ado, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon, the Instagram, all of that fun stuff. And now let's talk about the knives. Okay, so we're going to start off with the Bumblebee. Of course, the Anza Bumblebee is going to be probably the one that I would not recommend for survival as it is very tiny, as you guys can probably see in my hands. Uh, this is a very tiny blade, but ultimately, this would be an excellent companion knife for a lot of, hopefully it focuses, would be an excellent companion knife for a lot of things like caping and dressing game animals, ultimately. So, very small and very user-friendly. I really like the Bumblebee for the primary fact that you can still get a really good forehand grip or forefinger grip on the handle and uh, it still has a very very tiny very nimble blade that of course you can easily choke up on to get very precise uh, cuts this is really going to be a blade that you probably want to use more for things like caping and detail or small game skinning okay so now let's jump into a little bit more realistic options and we're going to go over the budget options first so the first one and there's no super cheap options though there are many moras and a handful of cold steels that would certainly fit the bill but i thought that i would talk about a few knives that are kind of lesser known and the first one is going to be the k-bar bk18 and once again for guide knives, I really wanted to choose knives that could be pushed into the survival and wilderness utility role as much as hunting. So it's kind of a dual purpose role. And the reason why I chose the BK-18 over something like the BK-16 really has to do with this harpoon uh, design of blade. Now the harpoon itself, this little uh, ramped bit here, and the extra stabby point aren't necessarily the most uh, realistic for games. This isn't necessarily going to be like a wilderness self-defense knife. But what I do really like about the harpoon blade of the BK-18 is you can see how wide it is. I believe it's around two inches at its widest. So it gives you a very long, very uh, tapered grind that lends its hand to being very slicey. In addition to, because it is so wide, you can really grasp it uh, You know, on the mid mid portion of the knife and really get good control over the blade. In addition to that too, the harpoon is also very nice because it's an, a near constant sweeping belly. The belly starts about back here. You guys can just see where my finger is. Uh, and then on and then it just continues on forward. So you get a nice long sweeping belly. Of course, you do get that very nice harpoon tip that is very sharp, very uh, very sharp, very pointed, and very thin. So if you're trying to start a cut, that will also work quite well for you. But yeah, so being able to do things like choking up on the blade, getting very fine control over that tip, are all things that actually lend the BK-18 to being a really good game processing blade. And once again, it is a good blade that can flex into the role of survival and wilderness. Not to mention too, the sheath is also pretty handy for being mounted in a myriad of different uh, configurations. Of course, I have a tech lock on mine, so I can carry it scout style, but you can rig this thing in just about any way you want it. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the SC3. Now, the SC3 is very similar to the BK18. It is a very, you know, sweeping, it has a very long sweeping belly, as you guys can see there. And overall, so it's a very long sweeping belly, as you guys can see there. This one does have a little bit more of a straight portion, but ultimately, this blade is very thin. Uh, is very thin and very slicey. So it does have a full flat grind and it is made out of a roughly one tenth of an inch thick blade steel, as you guys can see there, very, very thin. 
and uh, that just lends its hand further to being a very slicey, very nimble blade. Now, this one is in 1095, and if I was recommending this blade for particularly the application of hunting and guiding, I'd probably recommend the CPM S35VN version because it is slightly more brittle and slightly less, uh, and you can't quite abuse it as hard as this version, but of course it will be a lot more corrosion resistant and it will be a lot easier to kind of keep clean in the field. So I probably recommend the CPM S35V version either way though, even the 1095 really isn't that bad, primarily because of this really heavy duty truck bed liner coating that uh, covers 90% of the blade, if not more. So realistically, this is a just fine uh, addition, even if it's 1095, but the CPM S35VN would probably be a little bit more preferable. Aside from that, the other things that are really nice about the SC3 is it is a super minimal knife. It's not the lightest knife on the list. Um, it might be actually close, but uh, it is a very thin blade and very easy to carry. So even though it is around five ounces, it's still really pretty easy to uh, carry, throw in a pack, throw on your body because of its very thin profile and overall sleek nature. In addition, similar to the BK-18, you have a plastic sheath that can accept a wide variety of carry options. This one, of course, is rigged up with a necklace for neck carry, but you could easily put a tech lock on this, just like the BK-18 that I have, run it scout style, or choose another method of carrying it. So the sheath is very versatile. You can do just about anything you want with it, and uh, overall, this whole setup is pretty hard to beat for a robust, smaller wilderness blade for guiding. Okay, now we're stepping it up in price a bit. And when I do say a bit, these are not going to be very cheap options. They're around $200 and up, but these options are pretty darn good and are overall definitely some of my favorite knives in my collection as a whole. So the first one is the Bravo One by BRK. And uh, this guy is very fantastic. It is a smaller blade similar to the size of the BK-18. It's around nine inches in overall length, but it is an incredibly thick, as you guys can see there, blade. It's around a quarter inch thick, but the cool thing with this blade is because it is a convex grind, it really thins out. So you would not initially think or expect this blade as thick as it is, as robust as it is, to be a very good slicer or very good at fine tasks, but it really is. So the Bravo one is definitely one of my favorites for this for this type of roll because it fits in very well with being a solid wilderness survival knife that you can really put take it really put it through hell and it's going to continue to perform very well at the same time too though it is like i said going to be very slicey and it is going to cut very nicely so the bravo one is pretty hard to beat of course two other really nice things about the bravo one is that because it is a brk it is super super comfortable to hold there are absolutely no hot spots even with the ramped version of this blade as you guys can see there it is very easy to put your thumb as i'm trying to show here it's very easy to put your thumb right over that ramp and be able to just bypass it so you have the ramp if you need it for extra traction but if you need to bypass it, you can pretty easily do it that as well. In addition, this one does have one of the original Bravo One sheaths, but uh, this one is a pretty good sheath setup. I mean, of course you can put tech lock on the back of this. Not sure if you would, but uh, this is leather of course, so it's not necessarily the best of the best, but as far as a leather sheath goes, the Bravo One, or at least the original Bravo One leather sheaths are pretty hard to beat because as I said, you can mount it, using the tech lock system in the back, or you can use mount a tech lock onto this leather because it's uh, punched for it. I currently have mine running a Baldrick rig, and I think that that's probably my preferred way to carry this setup. But overall, it does come with a fire steel loop. It does not come with the fire steel, but uh, it does come with the fire steel loop, and it is a pretty solid blade. This uh, guard here, or this clasp, is this clasp is definitely keeping it in nice and tight. And so I definitely like this setup pretty well for a leather sheath. Now, another one from the Bark River family is going to be the Bushcrafter. And I think that the Bushcrafter definitely lends its hand maybe a little bit more to the wilderness because the Bravo one was originally designed to be a tactical knife. So you'll notice that the uh, 
Bushcrafter is a little bit, a fair bit uh, thinner, but don't let that fool you. It is still a really good processor and uh, it's not overly thin. Bushcrafter has and is still one of my go-to wilderness living knives, just in general, whether it comes down to processing game animals or processing firewood. The uh, Bushcrafter is very capable. It's stout enough to take a beating, but it's also thin enough to do a lot of fine tasks. It's also a bit smaller than the Bravo one, so if you need to do a little bit more fine detail or if you just want less blade overall, this is a fantastic option. Like with the Bravo one, this blade is very, very comfortable. This has a notable um, Coke bottle handle shape to it. Hopefully you guys can kind of see it's always hard to show it off on camera, but it kind of resembles the shape of a Coke bottle in the handle. So it is very, very comfy to hold for hours. This one, of course, is not jimped and it doesn't have any ramping. So it is super comfortable when you have to put pressure on the spine for added leverage or added pressure for cutting. Uh, aside from that, it's really just a fantastic blade. This one is in CPM 3V. I forgot to mention the other one was in A2, but uh, you can get the Bravo one in a wide plethora of steels. And the Bushcrafter, you can't get in as many steels. I think primarily CPM 154, CPM 3V, and like crew wear. <coughs> but any way that you get this blade, it is going to be a pretty good performer. I really do like the CPM 3V. I think it's very, very tough to beat. Now, this one is in a custom sheath, so this is definitely not fully representative of the original uh, Bark River Bushcrafter sheaths, but this is a pretty minimalistic, pretty slick rig in and of itself. Okay, so next one up on the list, and the last one on the list, so next and last on the list is going to be the 3DK MAK. And this one has to make the list, of course, because it is originally designed as an Alaskan uh, kind of multi-role knife. And it actually stands for multi-animal knife because it was originally designed to be a skinning and field dressing knife. But the nice thing about this blade is it can flex into just about any role. It has the same thickness as the Bushcrafter, 530 seconds, and uh, it is a pretty darn comfortable blade overall. It does have a little bit more of a pronounced finger guard, and I think that that's really designed more for when your hands are bloody and wet that they don't slip onto the blade. In addition to that too, you also have some nice contouring on the handles so you can do pinch grips, which are pretty useful for different skinning tasks. In addition to the blade is a great size so you can easily choke up towards the tip and get right where you need to be for doing finer tasks. One of the cool things that I really do like, and I know I talk about a lot about 3DK, is that the biggest advantage to these MAKs is the wide options that you can get from factory for modifications, from spine sharpening, from the spine being sharpened to certain customizations to the ergonomics, maybe reduction of hot spots if you find a personal hot spot. And also, too, you can get this in different handle materials, blade materials, finishes, and just a ton of customization. So that depending on what your applications are, if you know what you need, or if you want to spec into something, you know, kind of higher end for better corrosion resistance, edge retention, uh, or other things like that, you can really get uh, steels that will fit your roles or needs best. Now, of course, MAKs aren't cheap. I think the cheapest of them are like $200 and then they go right up to like 400 ish but overall they do offer a lot of versatility and a lot of utility for what they are and for being a really kind of basic knife it just does what it's supposed to do very well and uh, this one of course usually lives on my Desert Eagle. I do have a leather sheath as you guys can see here for when it's not on the Desert Eagle but uh, I that is another nice thing about these MAKs is you can get them with kydex sheaths, leather sheaths, you can get them with drop leg setups, you can get them with all kinds of different uh, ways to use and carry them. So the versatility with the MAK is just so tough to beat that I think it really has to be on this list because once again, depending on what your guiding applications or needs are, you might need something that is highly versatile or something that you can get with multiple different sheath setups for different types of rigs for either different hunts or different excursions. So I think the MAK flexes into those rules very well. 
Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was informative and deep. this helps you guys out. I know not everyone is a guide, but a lot of people that watch the channel hunt or are very active in the wilderness. So a lot of these knives also have direct application to hunting w within yourself and uh, hunting for yourself and by yourself or even with you know friends or family members. It also uh, definitely can be applied to wilderness living as a whole. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and hopefully this was helpful. As always, God bless and I'm out.